So one thing I get asked all the time is, Shane, how can I fix that dreaded no response error that I always see in HomeKit? So if that's you, well, today I'm gonna help you out. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday. And I also do live streams every week where we talk about things like HomeKit and I answer questions. So be sure to turn on all notifications so you don't miss out the next time I go live. And it was actually on a recent live stream that sparked the idea for this video. Someone actually asked me how to fix their no response issues and I wish there was a super easy, straightforward answer every time, but it's actually a bit of a loaded question. It often may take a little bit of troubleshooting and things like that to find the actual root of the problem, which could be a number of things. But when I do see that dreaded no response error, I'm usually able to fix it and find the root of the issue pretty quickly. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through all of the steps that I would take when trying to you know, diagnose and fix a no response issue in home. Kit. I've got chapters below in case you want to skip around, you know, as maybe you're fixing uh, some of these problems in your own setup. But first, some quick love to our sponsor for today's video, Trend Micro. I've actually been using the Trend Micro Premium Security Suite for the past two or three years now to protect all of my devices against malware, viruses, ransomware, and other threats, and I can definitely recommend it. You can use this for up to 10 devices. It's super easy to set up and protect all of your family's devices, iPhones, iPads, laptops, it's on all of my devices. It also turns any public hotspot into a secure Wi-Fi connection with a VPN, which is really important to have when you're out there, you know, on public Wi-Fi. You also get access to other great tools like identity theft protection, parental controls, and even 24 seven emergency assistance. Check out the link in the description and use code Shane 10 for 10% off of your purchase of the premium security suite. Big thanks to Trend Micro for protecting all of my devices and for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so let's start by getting some things out of the way. First, we're gonna go ahead and assume that you have a decent Wi-Fi network. That is essential in managing a smart home and why it's always the first thing that I always recommend to people to establish You know, when you're setting up your smart home. If you have crappy, outdated routers or a you know, spotty, weak Wi-Fi network throughout your home, you're most certainly gonna run into some issues at some point. Now, secondly, we're going to go ahead and assume that all your devices, Apple devices, HomeKit hubs, and even the smart home products are all running the latest firmware. If not, go ahead and update your firmware on all of these devices. If you're unable to connect to the smart home device, giving you that no response issue, it's okay, don't worry, just make sure it's running the latest firmware once we're able to reestablish a connection. And lastly, make sure that you're signed into the appropriate Apple ID on, of course, your iPhone or your iOS device that you're using, as well as your HomeKit hubs, like your Apple TV. Make sure your iOS device is connected to the correct Wi-Fi network and also make sure you have Bluetooth turned on on your phone. Now with all of that out of the way, we can try to take a look at actually finding the solution to our no response error. The first thing I usually do is try to determine if my connection issue lies with HomeKit or with the device itself. If you have other smart home devices that are working fine, then the issue is probably gonna be with that specific device and not HomeKit. There are rare exceptions to this, of course, and if all of your devices do become unresponsive, well, then you definitely have a home kit issue on your hands which we will come back to in a minute if it's just one individual device giving you problems more often than not a simple reset can fix the problem unplug it wait about 10 seconds or so plug it back in and many times that alone will fix the problem also, restarting your router could be a good thing to do right now. Often just killing and resetting that connection there uh, to these devices can kind of set everything right again. Now, we already mentioned that you should have a good Wi-Fi connection and network in your house. So if we're talking about a Wi-Fi connected smart home device, is it within range of your Wi-Fi router? Do you have many devices or interference on your network? I found that most decent mesh Wi-Fi networks can handle you know, up to around 100 devices or so. 
so before they start experiencing problems, but it could be less. So it's just something to look into depending on your particular router. Does the device use a bridge like Philips Hue or Acara? If that's the case, your devices might be too far away from the bridge. For example, if I wanna put a Philips Hue light way outside by my mailbox, but I have a really long driveway or something like that, there's a chance that I may not have a very reliable Zigbee connection way out there, which is what's needed to connect to that hub. Even if I have decent Wi-Fi, it really doesn't matter because I can't get a good Zigbee connection from that, you know, from that Hue light to the Philips Hue bridge. And a similar thing with thread devices, you have to think about that range. How far away is your device from that thread border router? Now, both thread and protocols like Zigbee can create a mesh network which can allow you to extend the range, you know, if you're using products that allow you to do so. So there are some ways to improve the range of these devices without, you know, actually moving them closer to your bridge uh, or hub, but all those are kind of things to think about. Are you using a Bluetooth device. They generally have the worst range and have to always be within Bluetooth range of your HomeKit hub in order to maintain a good connection. Is it a battery powered device or sensor? You know, this may seem obvious, but does the device need a new battery or maybe it needs to be charged? I've actually had battery powered devices or sensors go unresponsive on me in the past and I didn't realize they had a low battery until they were showing up as unresponsive. With all that, I will say that not all smart home products, even if they support HomeKit, are created equal. I've definitely experienced more no response issues with certain products or brands than others. I think some cheaper products, especially Wi-Fi based ones, may have a harder time, you know, maintaining a good connection to your network. You know, with that said, you should not be experiencing this no response issue often with any particular device. If you have a device that loses connection often, there's a chance it's just not a great product. Again, assuming that you have a solid Wi-Fi network and no other issues with you know, other smart home products. Another thing to look at when a device becomes unresponsive in HomeKit is to check to see if the device is accessible in its manufacturer's app. Now, most devices in HomeKit still have a manufacturer's app that you can use, like say Philips Hue app or the Acara app. And if you can control the device in the manufacturer's app, but not in HomeKit, well then we know that it is a HomeKit issue indeed. And if that is the case, this would be a good time to make sure that the device in question has the latest firmware. And you know, you can usually check and update the firmware in the manufacturer's app. It is possible that a firmware update could fix the issue. I'd say it's pretty rare for a device to be accessible in the manufacturer's app, but not in HomeKit, unless you're having issues with all of your HomeKit devices. If all of your HomeKit devices become unresponsive, especially if you have devices made by different brands, then we know it's most likely a HomeKit issue. Another telltale sign that you have a HomeKit issue is if your devices work, when you're at home, but instantly become unresponsive when you leave the house or you know disconnect from your home's Wi-Fi. Simply turning off the Wi-Fi on your iPhone, you know, could be an easy way to test this out. If all your devices become unresponsive, then it's pretty safe to say that you have an issue with, you know, your HomeKit hub most likely. Again, assuming there's no issues with your Wi-Fi network. Now, if you determine that you do have a problem with HomeKit, the first thing that I always do is check in the Home app to see which HomeKit hubs are currently connected if you have more than one. This can be done in the settings of the Home app. It should show one of your HomeKit hubs as connected and any additional HomeKit hubs should be in standby mode. And now would be a good time to restart your HomeKit hubs. Often a simple restart of the hubs will solve many problems. I'd start by just resetting the primary connected hub you can do that in the settings of the Apple TV or for your HomePods, you can do it in the HomePod settings in the Home app. If you're still having trouble, I'd go ahead and restart all of my HomeKit hubs. Might not be a bad idea to do every now and then anyways. You'd be surprised at how often just restarting your HomeKit hubs 
can solve home kit problems. This has helped me many times, not only just for you know response issues, but often if I'm having any weird issues like automation's not working right or you know just any weirdness going on there, unexpected issues, restarting your home kit hubs is usually the first thing that I recommend. It may also help to restart the iOS devices that you're using to access the home app. And I will mention probably as a last resort when dealing with a no response device is to just delete it or remove it from HomeKit, do a factory reset, then re-add it in the Home app. Now the downside here is that you will lose the device in any scenes and automations and we'll have to reconfigure all those once you get the device working again. So that's why I would you know, leave this as a last resort, but maybe that could fix the no response issue. And in extreme situations, maybe even signing out of iCloud on your HomeKit hubs and iOS devices and then signing back in. Uh, these are just some of the steps that I consider when I'm troubleshooting my HomeKit issues. Now there are some times when you may have to look even deeper if you still have issues. I'll often recommend turning off certain settings in your router like device prioritization. I know that was an issue for me personally at one point. Some HomeKit users will recommend turning off automatic band steering or separating your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands. Now personally, I do not do this. This may come down to your specific router and kind of your setup. So I'm using the Linksys Velop MX10 mesh Wi-Fi system still and running a combined SSID, which does mean I only have one username and password for my 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands and the router is actually able to determine when a new device needs to connect to 2.4 or 5 gigahertz and it will do so automatically. Now, I've obviously used many different smart home products from many different brands and I've never really had any issues running a combined SSID or a dual band network like this here, but it may be worth considering if that seems to be a problem for your network. And I have mentioned your Wi-Fi network so often in this video obviously your network does play a huge role in your smart home like I said in the beginning now, I've heard from many people that just replacing their old system with a more modern Wi-Fi mesh network has tremendously helped with you know many issues of home kit becoming unresponsive or running slow I would say that in most cases by now, you should have been able to resolve your no response error. Updating the firmware, restarting the device, and your HomeKit hubs often solves many of these issues. If you're still having issues, you can drop any questions down in the comments below, and please let us know, let me know, let everyone else know if you have had issues with no response being a problem and what you did to resolve it, if it's something maybe I left out or something that you discovered that, uh, that I didn't mention today. We can all learn from each other, so we would appreciate that. Again, drop those questions and comments down below. And if you wanna see some really good tips for backing up your HomeKit setup and scenes and other more advanced ways of troubleshooting and finding issues, check out this video right here with some really good tips for that kind of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't already for new videos every Sunday and consider becoming a channel member to support the channel even further and get some cool member only perks. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks again to our sponsor for today, Trend Micro. Again, check out the link in the description for that and I'll see you in the next video.